again. Don Mars making that high side work. Can he hold on to this? Donaldson works the inside. Down the back straight away, heading toward three. Donaldson and Mars side by side. Austin Johnson sitting in that third spot. Can Still he? side by side. Donaldson trying to slide job. Still your leader off of turn four, the 28D. Donaldson, your new leaders that go by. Mars slides back into that second spot. Keep an eye on that third place. That's a sensation. Also, Austin Johnson moves into that third spot, trying to run down those two leaders. And the turn, number three, coming off four. Donaldson on the inside. The alien from Planet Mars on the outside. Number nine of Mars. Can he get it done? Not this time by. Mars likes that high side of the racetrack. He flirts with it each and every week. Let's see if there's enough track for that nine to stay up there. Most of the time, you know that Don Mars is running the high side because you'll see the sparks coming off the back bumper as he's rubbing the wall because he does love to run that high side. And it seems like he's battling back for that lead on the outside. Give it to Mars at the line. I just look at it like this. He's just trying to clean off the walls, you know, just doing a little bit of that that uh, cleanup work a little bit early in the night. Don Mars still your leader down the back straight away. Mars with a good run on that high side. He is holding Dawson at bay. Dawson trying that inside line. Slides up the track. Sees like he is going to, have to settle into that second spot as Mars is stretched it out by two car lengths at the line. Mars oh. still on the top side of the racetrack. Gary Donaldson, that 28D, just jumps up there with him to try to find some grip. Austin Johnson working the bottom. Johnson in a nice, solid third place spot. Keep an eye on that car number 26 of Brown as he is moving into the pitcher in that four spot right behind him. Car number 69 making his presence failed as he is coming toward the front, but still up front. Don Mars, your leader. Coming up on lap traffic. Don Mars still working the top side. Don't look like Glacken's going to be a problem for Mars as he is on the low side. Mars is on the high side. Donaldson also going to get by without any problem as they come down the front straight away. Mars stretching that lead out a little bit. Austin Johnson with a little bit of trouble. Pressure back there. Donnie Brown to the 26 working the top side. Burlington trying to make that move on the high side of uh, Austin Johnson as they go down the back straight away. Looks like Burlington slips. That allows Austin Johnson to hang on to that third spot as he is coming up on lap traffic. Don Mars with clear racetrack ahead of him right now. Speaking of lap traffic, Donnie Brown. Glacken in the wrong place at the wrong time right there as he is sandwiched by them two cars going by him as he was lap traffic. Meanwhile, still up front, Don Moore stretching out that lead. But right there is Donaldson in the second spot as they come down the front straightaway. The old alien still setting the pace. Car number nine, he has got that thing on a rail. Mars recycling on the side of that race car right behind him. You have Donaldson. Battle heating up for that third spot. Here comes car number 69. 69T, Brian Wells making that presence field as he moves into that third spot. And here comes Burlington trying to work on Johnson. A little bit of contact between he and Johnson as they come off turn number four. Got two Austin Johnson with the move past the 69 as Stephen Dibbins. Well, let me correct that. That is Dibbins in the 69 car. Too many 69s out on the track for me as the bifocals go away. As Austin Johnson holding off that challenge for now, a little more contact between he and Dibbins as they go down the back straightaway. Up front, Don Marr pulling out to even a bigger lead. Over a bigger lead on Gary Dawson as he is holding on to that lead as they go down the front shoot into turn number one. Still working the top side. Little slick over off turn number two. But your leader, Don Mars, got a five car link advantage. Don Mars got that car working middle to high side of the track. Here comes Gary Dawson right behind the battle, still heating up. And it looks like Austin Johnson has recovered that third spot. As you see Brown moving into that fourth spot as he is trying to close in on Austin Johnson as he going to turn number one. More lap traffic for your leader as the racetrack starts to slick off. Racetrack changing before your eyes, especially over there in turn number two. Your leader having to check up underneath. A lap car gets by him clean. Let's see if it's going to hold up Gary as Donaldson. That's a white flag out on the track. One more time around for the nine of Don Mars. Donaldson trying to close that gap. Donaldson trying to close that gap to take him into turn number three. Into three out of turn number four. Looking for the feature win. The number nine of Don Moore's hands out. Picking up the feature win here on Seaburg Muffler. Night at the races.
What a race, Rodney. If that's just uh, setting the table for things to come tonight as we have just got the first feature completed. What racing action. Coming home in that second spot was Gary Dawson. Third, the sensation. Awesome, Austin Johnson rounding out that top three. Then comes the 26. Donnie Brown in the 26 car. Rounding out your top five will be the 69. Stephen Dibbon. Don Mars heading to McCarthy. The Mars Tree Service number nine. Waiting for that family to greet him there. Takes him a little bit of time. One more time, race fans. McCarthy Winter Circle. It's Don Mars. The old alien earned that one as he put that car out front early. He battled hard against uh, Gary Dawson early. It looked like Dawson had him on the inside, but uh, Mars never gave up that outside line, made it work for him. Picks up the feature win here tonight at Lakeside Speedway. Grand the winner of the Grand Nationals here tonight at Lakeside Speedway, Don Mars. Don, man, this hot rod looked fast tonight. It was fast, and luckily Rick stopped me from putting too much bite in it. I think I'd have pulled it down too much, and he uh, he stopped me just short of that, and it was just about right on. I was going to say, man, it, it looked like it handled pretty much anywhere you wanted it to and uh, just really got around the track fast. And I notice here you're running a crate motor. I am, and that's that's why I would have – I uh, probably would have went too far with it because the track would turn and dry. Yeah. And that crate motor probably wouldn't have pulled it where I'd have want to set it up. So, <laughs> But uh, he held me back, and yeah. it it was good. It was yeah. – I run mostly at the top, and yeah. – and, it was good. I was going to say, that's one of the keys to running these crate motors is keeping them wound up because, uh, man, you do, they just won't wrap up or something just as fast as the other motors will. They just won't pull as much, you know. I mean, it, if you pull them down too much, it it just takes – it's like you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, come on, come on, okay, come on, okay, you know. will it come? <laughs> yeah. And so you have to wait on them, and in that time, you know, sometimes – You'll get past, yeah. you know. <laughs> but anyway, good run tonight. Uh, now, I know you had a birthday, I think it was Sunday. Uh, how old were you? And uh, it's a good way to celebrate, a little late, but a uh, good deal for your birthday. Did you ask how old I was? Well, that's what I was kind of uh, curious about. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm 59. <laughs> 50, well, that's a good age. You still got a lot of good years left. I mean, man, that's just starting. I, I retired at, at, 50, at 60, and... Man, I'm having a great life, so I know you got to be, uh, you know, looking forward. But, uh, man, 59, that's still young. Well, there's guys that race older, quite a bit older than I am, and I stay in pretty good shape, so I want to race for a lot more years, yeah. so I'm going to as long as I can. Okay. Once again, the winner here tonight for the Grand Nationals, Don Mars. Don, how many won this year? Uh, three here and three at I-35. Man, that's a good year. I mean, 50, 59 or not, man, that's a good year. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's been fun. Okay. Don, he won. In the three out of turn four, Bobby Tavis, Jay Barnes, side by side. We're looking for 15 laps. Who's heading to victory lane? Here we go. Racked and stacked tight as they come by the flag stand, ladies and gentlemen. Barnes out to the early lead in that car, number 19. He takes them through turn number one. Coming off turn number two, down the back straightaway. Looks like the inside line is working as we take them into turn number three. Trouble over off turn number two. We got a spinner, he's out of the way. He looks like he's gonna stay on the gas and keep it moving, keep us clean. Your leader of lap number one's gonna be Jay Barnes. Barnes, your leader going into turn number one. A Little bit of dust to go through over in turn number two. Don't see that it'll be a problem as we got them three wide, battling for that second spot. Great action up front. Nate Barnes in the 29, trying to sneak up there with his brother. Nate Barnes was awfully fast in that heat race, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like he's wanting to run down the brother. We've got a battle of the siblings up front, but don't count out that yellow car number. Thirty G. That is Tony Barnhart. Barnhart on the top side. Nate Barnes on the twenty-nine. Still holding on to that second spot. Here comes Justin Seifert in that thirty-seven, following the suit of the twenty-nine. Out front, Barnes to your leader. Jay Barnes, that is, right there in second place. Brother Nate Barnes as they are battling it out up front. Fur running first and second as they come off turn number two. Down the back straightaway. Three wide off of turn number two. Tavis sticks it in the middle. Thinks better of it. Pulls out that OT. Yellow on the speedway. Yeah. <laughs> 
drive shaft on the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen. And it's pretty easy to see who it come off of. It's the car stopped on the infield. Yeah, you kind of need one of those to uh, keep racing, so I'm told. So Jay Barnes in Jeff, the 19 up front. Jeff Elder lost that drive shaft. That is car number 97 J. As he is bad. off the pace. Jay Barnes taking the green flag. Here we go. Jay Barnes after that early leads to go into turn number one. Coming off turn number two, like I said before, keep an eye on that 30J. Tony Barnhart on the high side trying to make it work, but Nate Barnes sells right into that second spot. Just inside for three wide. You can't see him, but he's in there. I promise the 37, three wide for that third spot. I'm not sure we ain't going to try to make it four and five wide as we come down the front straight away. In the meantime, up front, Jay Barnes likes what's going on behind him because that's holding him up, letting him stretch out that lead on brother. Somebody better let Jay Barnes watch the tape because he's missing a heck of a race behind him. Nate Barnes in that second spot once again. Three wide as they head into turn three. Three wide for third spot. Here comes car number 21. Vic, Tran Vic Tranquino as he is trying to make it four wide as they come down the front straight away. Yeah, I one. told you to keep an eye on that 05 heater. Here he is already up in the fifth spot. He is looking for more. Going to thread the needle. Going down the back straight away into three. Heater got chopped off there a little bit, cut that momentum in the 05. Race fans, we're going to come up on lap traffic. Lap traffic always comes into play, ladies and gentlemen. Some of them hit the setup, some of them don't. Jay Barnes, your leader, he's still out front, hoping things keep heating up behind him. That way he can hold on to that lead as he goes down the back straight away into turn number three. Here comes Brett Heater as he makes the pass into that fourth spot. Heater going to try to get to the top of the racetrack to give him some clear room past that lap car of Hank Thompson. Jay Barnes, Nate Barnes, still your top two. Heater looking for that third spot as he come down the front straight away. Seifert hanging on to it. Couldn't get it done, but he's diving to the inside. Hey, Keeping eye on that 30G car, ladies and gentlemen. Barnhart not giving it up either. And here comes a 21, a Tranquino. Tranquino sneaking into that top five. Justin Seifert in that 37, trying to work his way past Nate Barnes. Here comes Brett Heater on his back bumper. Throw him a rope. Here comes the 05. 19 hanging on that lead. They go into number one. Seifert on that high side. It looks like the high side may be working as Brother Nate closing in on the Jay Barnes up front. As here comes Seifert into that second spot. Is so going to three? Here you go. You got brothers up front in the barns. You got brother in laws running right with them. Justin Seifert, Brett Heater, brother in laws. Here they go. It's the family connection. Your top five. Heater diving that car on the inside, looking for second, but give it to Seifert that time by. Barnes doing all he can, holding on that lead. Can he hang on? No, here comes Seifert on the high side. Got the momentum up, looking for the lead down the back straight away. Brett Heater in that 05, going to try to push his way along. No, Not afraid to put it three wide if he has to. Heater sneaks to the top side. Both cars set up the same way. They both drive a little bit different. Seifert to the second spot. Very close to the line, but it looked like the 19 of Barnes still had the lead. Seifert got that high side working. Here comes Heater. Is he going to try it on the inside as we have a new leader down the back straightaway? You called him earlier. Here comes that 05. Brett Heater down to the bottom of the racetrack trying to make the pass on his brother-in-law. Said, hey, you married my sister, but I'm going to the front. That don't mean nothing when they go out on the racetrack. All family love goes out the window as they are door handle to door handle. Heater trying to sneak on the inside, but Seifert not giving it up as they come off turn number two down the back chute. Heater trying to set him up as he works to the top side. Brett knows what he's doing. He's not going to show his hand too early. Passing flag coming out for Smith in the 56K, ladies and gentlemen, as he pulls that car on the high side. Maybe all Heater needs as he looks to the inside of Seifert. Heater right on that back bumper doing everything he can, but he cannot get to move on Seifert as they go down the back straight. I think Brett may just be holding off, playing possum a little bit right now. you got to know when to hold him and know when to fold him. He's going. Going to get a little bit of help, possibly. Thought possibly the, the lap car of the 56K was going to help him out, but Heater's still back in that same spot. Heater diving to the inside, still can't make it work. Around goes the 21. Very uncharacteristic. Tranquino loops it down in turn number one, in turn number two. Yellow caution on the racetrack as Tranquino loops it, pulls off the track, gets the car going now, comes back out on the racetrack. Race in. Take them, Rodney. Justin Seifert out of turn number four. Here we go, race fans. Down the front straightaway, race fans. There he goes. You called it as he dives to the inside drag, races him down the front straightaway. Is he going to make the power slide work? No. Here comes Seaver back on the house side. Got that momentum up. But right there as he, as round goes, Foster contact. 
30 G gets into the side and Barnhart in the side of Foster and around goes Foster. Foster setting the wrong way on the racetrack and he is coming out of the race car so that means dinner arrangements will be discussed on the back straight away I think. Sean normally a cool common collective guy we'll see how he reacts. Great one of the nicest guys in the pits in that 55 machine the over there. factory stocks. Slow pace into three. Hard on the gas at a turn number four. Here we go. Heater with the jump. Seifert trying to play that waiting game, ladies and gentlemen. He waited really late to start him. May not have worked to his advantage, although the high side seems to be the way around. But Heater holding his own down the back straightaway. Absolutely. I thought Seifert was going to have a run. Here he goes, drives it in deep. Back on the gas is the 05 Red Heater. White flag this time by. One more time around, ladies and gentlemen. That's all it needed was that one slip by Seifert. But here comes Seifert diving back on the inside. It's As they got come off turn number two, ladies and gentlemen. Heater on the high side. Seifert in the second. Take him home, Rodney. Down the back straightaway. Sticking it to the high side is the 05. Seifert to the bottom. He's going to have to do him to get by. Side by side off a of turn number four. Give it to the 05 of Brett Heater. Seifert coming home in that second spot. Then comes car number 19. That is Jay Barnes. Then right behind Jay Barnes is brother car number 29, Nate Barnes. And then the OT, Bobby Tavis the third. Great race and action race fans. Brett Heater in the 05 out of Kansas City, Kansas. What they call cheater, Heater Motors built by their father. You'll see him come out here. I'm going to bet $100 that his father comes out in a white t-shirt and some overalls. I'm going to yep. just make it 100 bucks. I noticed one of his fans down there holding up six fingers. Does that mean six in a row here? I don't know about six in a row, but they got six feature wins for him. Six in a six row. Six in a row for him. We've got the second place finisher here tonight for this factory stocks, Justin Seifert. Uh, Justin, uh, you didn't win, but man, uh, I don't know exactly how to put this. It's got to be a good deal for the I don't know exactly, is it the cheater heater racing family whatever thing, but uh, you, you guys got to be proud of what you're doing finishing first and second with Brett winning. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like you said, it's the cheater heater stable, or as, as we call it, or whatever. We, uh, My father-in-law, Brett's dad, builds all of my motors, builds his motors, builds several other motors out here. And uh, once I got in the lead, I you know, I told myself, if I lose it, I want to lose it to him. And, I mean, he's the same way. If, if one of us could bring it home and then it's bringing it home to the shop, you know, we all try to try to work together as much as we can and just kind of go from there. And then once I once I seen he got around me, I was like, well, I, you know, I, I want to win it. But, you know, if I, if I don't win it, you know, I want him to win it. So that's just kind of how it went. You know, it's kind of getting to be a family deal there in this factory stock deal between the heaters and the family and and uh, the Barnes boys. So, uh, y you know, it's kind of an interesting deal. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid so. One of the little ones got our, our cable. I hope we're still connected. But anyway, uh, like I say, it's really getting to be an interesting thing. Of course, I think Brett is just stepping out right now. Uh, six wins. Gosh, I can't imagine what the points deal looks like right now. Do you know? Uh, the point still, I'm not really for sure. I ain't been really looking at that a whole lot. He might be, but uh, I, I can imagine what he's doing there. I mean, uh, the go, the, to go back to the Barnes Brothers deal, is, it was really cool knowing that once, I mean, once the race was over with, I didn't know where they were, but it was really cool knowing that, you know, two sets of brothers were yeah. battling it out. You got the Barnes Brothers, you got the Heater Cheater Brothers, you know, yeah. battling it out. It was, it was really cool on that, but... But the point still on his, I mean, it, he's got to be up there somewhere. But, I mean, hopefully hopefully it comes down to the wire, you know. It, it, it keeps it interesting for the fans. That's what they want. And, you know, just hopefully it comes down to the last race, the last, you know, last points race of the season. So That would be nice. That, yeah. that, that really makes it interesting for everybody up there. But uh, congratulations on second. Like I say, it ain't first, but, man, you got to be happy. Style. 15 laps. Feature, ladies and gentlemen. Out of turn number four, Matt, Matt Pugh in the 38 going to lead him into turn number one. Pugh, your early leaders that go through turn number one, coming off turn number two. Watch that high side come in as they got it working down the back straightaway, side by side with Neiman for second. Four wide back there. Everybody thought better of it. Higley, Jake Richards, and Randall Scheffenbein. 
Right now, leading lot number one, going to be Luke Neiman in the 181. Don't be so quick about that. It's battling <laughs> back on the outside, ladies and gentlemen, was a 38 of Matt Pugh. But now it looks like Neiman's got it, but here comes Pugh back on the outside, not giving it up that easy in the three. Here comes Father Time in the 42. That's going to be Gene Claxton. He's on the bottom of the racetrack, sneaking into that top five. Claxton loves that low side as he comes off turn number three. Can he make it work on this track tonight? No, hanging on that lead, Neiman out, out front in a 181 car. 42 of Gene Claxton sneaks in there, give him the four spot as he gets by. David Holcomb, here comes Aaron Morant. Not, new, not really on the bottom side of the racetrack normally, but he is right now. Morant got that Ford horsepower hooked up as he comes down the front straightaway. Neiman still your leader in the 181. Here comes back on the inside, ladies and gentlemen. Keep an eye on him as he battles for that lead. Keep an eye on the 99 and 11. Mike Higley and Brad Smith putting on a show just outside the top five. Claxton into that, moving into that second spot as he looks on the inside of Neiman. Neiman slides up high. Here comes Claxton. Give it to the 11 at the line. Mike Higley in the 11 car taking over that lead and not looking back. Here comes Claxton into that second spot. Veterans getting it working down the back straightaway. Absolutely to the top side. Father's time in the 42 trying to sneak by. Here comes Mike Higley as he's looking past Luke Neiman. He's out front. Randall Scheffenbein out front in the 11. A junior, a former hobby stock champion in Heartland Park, Topeka. How long can he hold on to it, though, as you see Claxton. Claxton into that second spot, and here comes Higley. As Whoa. we got caution as they're piling into each other down in turn number four. Just keep stacking them up. Six cars involved down in turn number four. Looks like Mike Taylor. Greg Trulove involved. David Holcomb over there. Sam Shula in the 44. Aaron, Rod Aaron Roddinghouse. <laughs> into turn three, out of turn number four. Six laps down, 15 laps the distance. Here we go. Green flag in the air, ladies and gentlemen. They come by the flag stand. Randall takes them into turn number one, but look on that high side. Higley got that momentum up. A little bit of contact between the 99 and the 42. Back goes Claxton all the way to six spot. Here we go. The 11 junior out front on the bottom, the 11 up top. Higley has to come off the gas. That's going to give the door to the 99. Brad Smith to second. Smith in the second. They come by the flash stand into turn number one. Still Randall up front. Here comes Smith. And we're side by side for that third spot. And here comes Moran on the high side in the 70 down the back shoot. But don't look now, Brad Smith. You're going to have to shut it down because look, we got issues over in turns one and two. Yellow flag. Caution on the racetrack. Car around down there in turn number one and two. They're going to take them high for evasive action. M11. Matt Herring. Setting to work. Matt Herring turned around down in turn number one between one and two. Brings out a yellow flag on the racetrack, and that's going to bunch them up again up front. 99, 11, 17, up front. Randall Schiffelblind Jr., your leader, right behind him, car number 99. That is Smith in the 99 car. Then comes Higley, then comes Morant. This, this is 38. Chad, yeah, Chad Feather coming toward the front in that 11C car. Keep an eye on it as he is coming. Right behind him, Claxton was your third, second or third place car. Slip back on that restart as there's a little bit of contact between him and the 99 of Smith. Moves Claxton back to that Go sixth spot. Green flag racing, Rodney. Lights out on the speedway. Once again, the 11 junior, the 11, the 99. Chad Feather, there's a bunch of 11s up there. Yeah, they're just trying to confuse me up here in the booth. I have trouble anyway. Roll them into three, out of turn number four. Everybody trying to pick up the pace. Here we go. Wow. Smart start for Randall as he held them up and started late. Pulls out to about a three car link lead going into turn number one. As it go off turn number two, keeping all that 99 cars. He's got that momentum up on the high side going down the back stretch. There he looking for the lead, the Belton Bullet, the 99. 
Brad Smith looking to the top side, might have the preferred line. At a turn number four, give it to Brad Smith. Smith at the line, car number 99 takes the lead, but not giving it up. Randall on the inside. Very Adler impressed. With takes that lead back, but not for long. It's a momentum on the high side. Very Carry impressed. He took the punch and gave one right back. Shufflebine still on the bottom. Higley trying to sing, sing it up there on the top side. Not going to work. The 99 trying to check out. Got a car high up against the wall down in turn number four. Very slow on the racetrack as everybody goes by. Let's see if he can get that car into the infield. Keep us in green flag racing. That is the 33, 36 J off the pace and into the infield. Stay green. Shovel by not going away, battling back to that 99. Very impressive run for that 11 junior. Randall trying to make that inside work. Not, don't know if it's going to work for Smith. That Smith is no stranger on that high side. That's why he is so high in the points in the U.S. Army Championship. Track starting to change up a little bit. Slick off. Losing the top side. Morant trying to make that top side work, but the 11C, ladies and gentlemen, Chad Feather moves himself into that fourth spot. Down the back straightaway again, Randall not giving it up, but out front, Smith holding on to that lead in car number 99. Shuffle by not going away, working the bottom side by side. Looks like he's got that bottom figured out as he is giving Smith all he wants going through turn number one and two. Boy, I can't tell you I saw that coming. Shufflebein, I figured, was just going to settle in for that second spot, but fighting back. That proves the racer in him, and the racer's coming out in him as he is battling for that lead. Looking to the inside, coming off turn number four, down the front straight away. Smith still your leader this time by. Car number 87 of David Hartman around as you see him sitting over in turn number two, ladies and gentlemen. Brings out yellow flag on the racetrack. A little bit too close to the racetrack to stay green. Don't want to put another drivers in danger, so yellow flag comes out on the racetrack. Not what Brad Smith wanted to see right now. Brad Smith sitting pretty out there holding off the 11 junior. Give a call. I'm very, very impressed at that 11 junior Randall Shufflebein. Out of Topeka, Kansas. Man, I'll tell you what. Brad Smith passed him, checked out a little bit, and he dialed it in, and Randall came right on back and, and, and threw a punch ready right for him too as they come off turn number four, green flag. There he goes. Brad picks it up in the middle of three and four. He wants to go, and he wants to go now. How about the jump by Randall as he settles right back into that second spot, making that low side work. Smith on the high side as the 11s are not going away as we got them three deep. Here comes Higley on the top side, trying to bring Gene Claxton with him. Shufflebind holding on to that second spot. Looks like your battle right now is for second and third. How about Chad Feather as the white flag coming out one more time around for Bad Brad Smith as he takes it into turn number one. Coming off turn number two, Smith still your leader, battle for the 311s. How about Randall there, but here comes Higley on the high side. That momentum we talked about, Chad Feather going to split it, not going to... The two 11s, that's the last, actually three 11s right there, Snake Eyes. Off of turn four, bad Brad Smith taking it to victory lane. And usual, got that hand out to win the thumb in the air. Second place to Higley in car number 11. In comes Chad Feather. What about him slipping in there for third and then Randall into that fourth spot and then the old veteran Claxton rounding out your top five. Absolutely. Lundy, it's been a pleasure being up here with you. Take us home on them May Modifieds. You're doing a well of a job up here. Keep up the good work. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. And uh, like you say, May Modifieds will come up next. But it's the man of the hour right now, the 99. He's out of Belton, Missouri. Thanks, that was fun. Thank you. Brad Smith going over there, waving to his wife. Cheetah chassis built by Nick Newton. Had to jump out of that car for a little bit. Get it fixed. Had to borrow some rides. Now back into the 99. Be careful, guys. He got stung by a bee, so it's going to take him a minute to get out of this race car. It's an inside joke, I promise. In the McCarthy winner circle on Seaberg Muffler. Nine at the races. There he is, race fans from Belton, Missouri. It's Brad Smith. 
Brad Smith not trying to stand on top of the race car tonight. Good move, Brad. Appreciate that. FisherMeRacing.com down there to get that taken care of for him. Seaberg Muffler night at the races. Brad Smith takes that cheetah chassis to the front. Race fans, one more time. He's from Belton, Missouri. Brad Smith. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. Pulls into the infield. 25 laps the distance. On Seaberg Muffler, night at the races. Here we go. And Morant jumps to the bottom side of the racetrack. Bubba Harvey to the top side. Here comes Justin Johnson in that 7J. Morant still all over the bottom. Bubba Harvey not going away. Three wide behind him. Give it to Morant for lap number one. Nick Bittinger sneaks into that four spot just behind Justin Johnson. Bittinger in that 3B out of Perry, Kansas. Nice run on, out of turn number two for Bubba Harvey. Now your leaders, they head into turn number three. Francis drive in, 3B looking to lead lap number three. Here we go. Darren Fuquay sneaks into that top five. Him and Nick Bittinger, no stranger to racing each other on this half mile. Three wide off of turn number four. Morant on the bottom of the racetrack. Nick Bittinger, Bubba Harvey, three wide off of turn number two. Morant still your leader. Bittinger thinks better of it as he backs out. Darren Fuquay wants to get in there and play. Aaron Morant down the back straightaway. Nick Bittinger now slides into that second spot. Fuquay in that 87 trying to take over the third spot from Bubba Harvey. Gets that car turned, the 87. Now your third place. New leader to 3B off of turn number two. Work in the middle of the racetrack. Smoke starting to come out of the 3B. Looks like Donnie Burlington to the infield in the 88. Aaron Morant works his way past the 87 for that second spot. But right now in his own zip codes, the 3B of Nick Bittinger. Battle back for that second spot. The big time Bell Bonds 87 of Darren Fuquay back to the second spot on the top side of the racetrack. Traffic will play a factor here in about a couple laps. Jerry Liston will be the first one up for your leader. Everybody's starting to spread out. It's like Nick, the yellow on the speedway. 
Jerry Liston sets over off at turn number two. So Jerry Liston comes to rest over off at turn number two, brings out the caution. So Nick Bittinger out of Perry, Kansas. The year later. Eleven laps down. Lights out on the speedway. Nick Bittinger going to lead him to the green. All by his lonesome up there. Here we go. Picks it up early in turn number three. Fuquay back to the top of the racetrack. Give you time to settle in and possibly... Work on your brakes a little bit. Fuquay might have found something. Eighty-seven to the bottom of the racetrack, just trying to find a line that he can get up to the three B of Nick Bittinger. Fuquay jumps the cushion. Three games, it takes a big time mail bombs. 87 back to the second spot. Yellow on the speedway. Yellow on the speedway. Of, is it, and as everybody looks at me, lets me know it's a drive shaft as I. I was really, really sure I knew it was a drive shaft. I'm familiar. Bittinger started early in turn number three. Let's see if he changes it up this time. Nope, starts a little bit earlier than that. Here we go. Playing a little bit of mind game. Yellow on the front straightaway, Bubba Harvey sitting down there as he was, he got the bad end of a deal as all these cars checked up. The Fritz is driving, Matt Miller roofing. Three at Bubba Harvey. A good night at a turn number four. A little bit different starting spot for Bittinger this time. Morant making his way into that second spot. Morant to the bottom side of the racetrack in that 70. Trevor Hunt working past the 87. Hunt to the third spot. Trevor Hunt with a great runoff at turn number two. Using the middle of the racetrack, the 99H putting on a show right now. Trevor Hunt working past Aaron Morant. Plenty of time. If he's fast enough, Fuquay trying to dial it back in, but Justin, Justin Johnson battling back in for that fourth spot as well. Johnson with a great run on the bottoms in one and two. Still working hard with the 99H. Looks like he might have the upper hand this time by.
Side by side for that second spot down the back straightaway. Just as caution on the racetrack. There's debris. Debris high in turn number one. Right up in that groove where these guys are running into turn number one. So Nick Benninger missing a great race behind him all by his lonesome up there, but he might have some company with that 99H, Trevor Hunt. Seventeen laps down, twenty-five laps is the distance. Nick Benninger, he's got some company from a fourteen-year-old. Here we go. Not so fast, says Aaron Moran as he sneaks into that second spot. Caution in one and two. It's like Tyler Schmidt. Kerry Davis. And we're going to rename Big Bad Bubba Harvey tonight to Poor Poor Bubba Harvey. Starts a little bit later. Trevor Hunt with a better restart. Hunt to the bottom side. Justin Johnson into that top five right now. Here comes the 99H. With a nice drive in the bottom of one and two. That's really where it's going to help him right now. New leader to the back straightaway, the 99H of Trevor Hunt. Still your leader, Bittinger not backing down. Side by side. It's a two horse race down the back straightaway. Bittinger now your leader. Bittinger drives it in deep into turn number four. Creates a little bit of space. Trevor Hunt picks up his space into one and two. Using a lot of racetrack over there off of turn number four. It seems to be working to his advantage. Jason Bodenhaber off the racetrack. It's going to take a slip up from that 3B machine. Flag next time by. <laughs> Nick Benninger looking to head to victory lane again here in 2013. One more time, Darren Bennett. Yellow on the speedway, it's not what the 3B needed. Not what the 3B wanted to see. 
Exactly what that 99H wanted to see. Lights out on the speedway. Green, white, checkered here at Lakeside Speedway. Seaberg Muffler. Night at the races. Nick Vinegar out of turn number four. Here we go. Trevor Hunt's been great in one and two. Let's see if he can get it to stick. Nice drive off of turn number two. White flag this time by for the 3B of Nick Vinegar out of Perry, Kansas. Dives to the bottom. Off of turn number two, a two car link advantage over the 99. Of Trevor Hunt, no stranger to victory lane. Off a of turn number four, give it to the driver from Perry, Kansas. That's Nick Binninger. Your top five, Justin Johnson comes home fifth. Aaron Morant, fourth. Terry Schultz. And Nick Binninger going to the McCarthy Auto Group victory lane. Trevor Hunt gave it all he had. So your point leader out of Perry, Kansas. Stretches that lead out. He was 52 points ahead coming in tonight. Over the 1K of Tim Carrick. And he finds himself in the McCarthy Auto Group. Winner's circle. Give it up. He's from Perry, Kansas. That's Nick Bittinger. Race fans, we appreciate you guys spending your Friday night at Lakeside Speedway. We do it each and every Friday night. Same time, same place. Next week, remember, we will be giving away $1,000 worth of jewelry thanks to Toner Jewelry. We got the winner of the USR8. A mods, Nick Binniger. Uh, Nick, uh, you kind of had to earn this. I mean, it almost looked easy at times, but then, man, you had all kinds of different challengers. It seemed like at different parts of the race, uh, and of course, then Trevor Hunt there at the end. Man, uh, I mean, that was tight. Yeah, Darren was coming early. I knew he had to be be close, so we uh, we ran the car hard all night. Uh, there at the end, Trevor gave me a good run, so it was uh, it's fun racing against those guys. The uh, the track guys are getting the track figured out. The track's real good now. Yeah. Uh, just got to enjoy running a race like that. So, I have to ask you on that. What was it? Next to the last restart, I can't remember. But anyone, the, the one where Trevor seemed to get under you. Did your tire seal up or anything? Because man, it looked like you were running a completely different line. No, I just slipped the tires in the center of three. I kind of slipped the tires and got the car a little bit free, and then he beat me into one. And I saw his nose down there. I knew knew he was there, but. Uh, I knew if I hit my marks, I could get back around him. So, yeah. I was going to say, a completely different line. That, that's what got me, because you had been driving it in real hard into one and three and kind of up here pretty close to the cushion. And then on them other restarts, you were doing that business where you go in low and then you drift up across the corner to the cushion. And, you know, that makes all of us worry when you do that. I've been beat by a slide job a few times this year, so I wasn't going to let that happen anymore. <laughs> got got robbed last week at uh, Lucas Oil Speedway by a door slam, so it's good right. to... Good to come up here and have a clean run and uh, and get a win. Nobody was beating you off the corner. I think that's what impressed me, especially on the restarts. Man, you were up on that high line, hammer down, and shoot by the flag stand. You were five or six car lengths ahead. Hey, that's the plan. You got to get as uh, 
you got to get as much as you can early because they're going to get to you by the end. So He's a humble boy. I like that. He's real humble. <laughs> I like Nick about that. But, Nick, congratulations on a great win tonight. And uh, next week, a uh, big points lead. So uh, you just got to hang in there. Yeah, we got to keep having solid finishes. Now we're uh, we're kind of looking at the national points deal. We're in the top ten now, so we've got uh, we've got to have solid runs for the rest of the way out, just uh, just to stay up there in the national points and try to get a little check from them. Nick Benner, winner. Thank you.